Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Cuban pianist, vocalist, multi-instrumentalist, composer, producer, and a band leader, Roberto Fonseca. This Cuban-born and bass cat has released nine solo albums, collaborated across genres, been nominated for a Grammy Award, and toured the world several times over. We caught up with him about his latest CD, the 2019 release, Yesen. So his father played the drums and his mother was a dancer. That swayed him quite a bit in his life. His first professional gig was in a Beatles cover band before taking up piano at the age of eight. He has been composing his own music since adolescence. He has been called an artist with prowess and ideas with a questing jazz sensibility and deep roots in the Afro-Cuban tradition. So get to know him and dig this interview, my friends. Hey, thanks for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz. No, thank you for, for to have this shot. You bet, man. Hey, I love your album, love your work, and I want to know, what was the vision for your latest album, Yesen? My vision was trying to share my my spirituality with people. I All my, my influence, you know? That's why, that's why I'm saying all the time that I that I want to, to the people feel the history of, of, of my song, you know, because every, every song has a story, it's like a storyteller, and it's very important for me that people get these feelings, you know, that's why that was my vision. You're from Cuba, does that tapestry have a lot to do with the sound and spirituality that you're conveying? Definitely, man. I'm from Cuba. I come in from a really family, uh, music family ambient. My mom put me into a lot of, uh, my, my parents, they put me into a lot of uh, traditional Cuban music, uh, they put me into a lot of uh, Afro-Cuban music, classical music, but at the same time, my brother, they put me into a lot of uh, soul music, funky music, rock music. And that moment, we, because we was close to the United States, we get the F FM, you know? And yeah. from that, from there, we, we, we was able to listen to some of the group there. Uh, yeah, I grew up with this, and then Cuba is an amazing country about music. All of this is the, is, is the way that I am now. So you've released nine studio albums. You've collaborated with a lot of other folks. What, and then this is a very spiritual album, what are you trying to do with each release? Is there an evolution? Is there a vision? What are you trying to do as an artist? It's, a, it's, my, it's my vision about music. It's my evolution about music. It's my point of view about how to share music with people. So that's why for me, each album is very important. Um, but this one, is, is, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward for the reaction of the people. Because now in this one, I get, I, I came in the really major way, and then I feel like uh, I, I, now I'm, I'm the Roberto Fonseca that I want to be. This album is getting such good reviews. You're getting so much press from this. What do you think it is about this album that's really coming across to not only fans, but critics and all around? Why, why do you think this is hitting so hard? I think the, the most important thing in this album is a really honest album i'm 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 we the whole thing that we did this album we are talking about we, we we were talking with the truth you know through the music we are not uh, trying to to show any skill about virtuosismo or, or to if i play fast or i can play like this or like that we just are trying to to, to share our feelings and then people are receiving these kind of things. Uh, this is an honest album. This is really clear, uh, minimal sometimes, sometimes complicated, but uh, this is a, the, the, the way that we are trying to share the music with people. That's why I think that people get this, this music. So if we go back to your roots, what were some of the early <laughs> jazz albums or artists that you were listening to that really influenced you? Well, first of all, it was Miles Davis, you know. Then it was, uh, because I was a break dancer, and there was uh, Herbie Hancock with the Rocket, you know. We remember that time there was the Rocket uh, with, uh, from Herbie Hancock. Um, the first cassette that came into my house was, uh, was a cassette. On one side was Keith Jarrett, on the other side was uh, Bill Evans. So that's the four guys that really influenced me. It was Miles David, uh, Herbie Hancock, uh, Kid Jarrett, and Bill Evans. 
beyond that, probably some of the most major influences in your life. Your father was a drummer. Your mother was a dancer. What kind of influence did they have on you becoming an artist? I mean, they have the most important influence because my father put me into a lot of Afro-Cuban music. From my father, from my father, I discovered another great, great influence from that I have with Lili Martinez, Arsenio Rodriguez, and then from my mom, she she made me listen to a lot of classical music like Chopin, or Beethoven, these kind of things, you know. So my family is the 99 percent of my influence. That's why I'm the musician that I'm now. I'm really, I'm really blessed to have my my family. So talk to me when you were really young. Your first professional gig was in a Beatles cover band. What was that like? It was beautiful because I was playing drums because I really liked the, the rhythm section. But I was playing drums and then I was that was my first band. And uh, and when we was playing, people was, was enjoying, you know. And seeing people enjoying music coming from ourselves, that, 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 that was beautiful. We did a, we make a lot of mistakes. We did a lot of mistakes for sure, but that that doesn't matter. You know, we was uh, we was enjoying all together, and then, and then the, our colleague was saying, "Oh yeah, that sounds cool. Oh, that's great." You know, and then yeah, that that gives you the opportunity to to feel the importance of of, of sharing music with people. So, who were some of the most influential teachers that you've had in your life? Things they may have said that really stick with you to this day. I have uh, two teachers, that they, they really, two female teachers, that they really uh, teach me how to, 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 care, to take care about music. Was, I mean, we have classical uh, music school in Cuba, and the first one was a Russian uh, teacher, that was a, a Russian teacher called Irina, and then the other was a Cuban teacher, was called uh, Rosalia. These two ladies, they, they show me how to treat any type of music on the good way, you know. Be open mind musician, take care about music, take care about melodies, take care about the rhythm. And that's why I'm 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 really open mind musician and then I'm looking forward to any type of a style. So, you know, the goal as a musician is not to get awards, but it happens. So I want to ask you, in 2012, you, you got a Grammy nomination for Yo. That had to feel good for you after all of this time in the industry to get recognized. That's great. You know, awards, is that, that's not the more important thing, but you feel good when you have one. You know, when you get the, the nomination. When I get the nomination, I was, I was smiling, I was crying, because I was thinking on how many musicians they they have been doing a lot of great things, you know, and they they didn't get any nominations, you know. And then I was feeling sad for them, but at the same time I was feeling really good because of my my my, my family. I make kind of a little history, you know. Being from Cuba, living in Cuba, and get uh, uh, nominated for the Grammy. That's 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 amazing. That's that's. Um, yeah, that's, I, I I know I have words to describe the feeling. Then if we're happy again, I will be just being nominated is an award already. You know, because that's that's uh, uh, people are saying that they like you what you're doing. What do you like the best about being a professional musician? Being a professional musician, the most important thing that I'm a professional musician doing what I love, doing what I like, you know. When you are a professional musician, that means that you get paid, and then that means that you can that you get a lot of concerts on the on the really important venue. But all this together, with the feeling that you are playing your music and people are reacting to your music, that's that's amazing, you know, because you are doing what you're doing. So you're doing what you really like like to do, like playing your music, playing your song. Even when I was playing with Buena Vista Social Club with Ibrahim Farad. I was playing with the music that I really like because from traditional Cuban music, the Son Montuno, is the style that I really like. So being there with Brian Ferrer, with Casadito Lopez, with Omara, enjoying this history of music that was for me really good. And being professional gives you the opportunity to travel, to, to play in this kind of venue, on the other venue, club. That, that's, that's beautiful. 
You know, the one thing about being a musician is it takes a little while to find your true voice. And I want to know if when you if you come to Kansas City and play a concert and you have to write up something and, and tell people what you give a live audience during a performance, how would you describe your live performance and what your voice is saying? Yeah, you are right. The most important thing on a musician is trying is get your voice, your own voice. That's why I really love Miles Davis, I really love Herbie Hancock, I really love all of the greatest because they have their own voice. It's amazing. If Miles Davis will play any type of style, you will recognize it was Miles Davis with only two notes, three notes, you will recognize that, that he's, my, he's my Davis. That's the thing that I'm trying to do my own. I want to people recognize me with only two notes or three notes, you know. Um, um, there are some kind of people that already tell me, I know where, when, when your sound, I know I recognize the Roberto Fonseca sound, you know. And when I go to play there, to, to Kansas City or, or any place, the most important thing that for me is being original, you know. Don't try to make it any copy and take a risk. And if you take a risk, then you will find your own voice. And that's my own voice. But at the same, uh, but at the same time, I'm sharing my music, but at the same time, I'm sharing my culture. Because I will never forget where I come from. So it's very important that people feel that I'm a, a Cuban player, a Cuban piano player, with a lot of influence, but I still Cuban piano player. So what was one of the first jazz shows you saw live that really moved you? That was a long, long, long time ago, when, when in Havana, in Cuba, we had the, the jazz festival. And then I saw there for the first time Dixie Gillespie. That was amazing. And then I saw another group that I don't remember, was like a, a group of hip hop or something like that, or soul, I don't, don't remember. But they was making the sound check, they was getting ready to, to, to play. And then people was talking about the way they was dressing. You know, people was like, oh, you look at the way they dress, they dress is really cool. And then when he started to play, it was, it was crazy. It was beautiful, that was powerful, that was, so, that was great. And then I say, you know what? This is the one, this is the music that I want to do. Beautiful. So, why do you love jazz? Because I have freedom, first, have freedom to, to talk, have freedom to express yourself, and jazz is really open to any type of music, you know. The improvisation, you just, so if you are able to improvise, that will give you a lot of things about communicate with other cultures. Because for me, the music is a universal language, you know? And when you are open to talk with other people, and then you are able to play something that they, were, they are playing, that they, that's what the improvisation give it to you. Give you the knowledge about to know your instrument, but at the same time give you the knowledge about to know different music. That's one of the most beautiful things we get. So my final question is this. Everyone has their vision or their perception of who they think you are. Your family, your friends, your fans, but you know yourself. You're living your life. Who do you think you are? Yeah. I'm, I'm a crazy Cuban... No, wait, wait. I'm a, a crazy, romantic Cuban who decided to talk to 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 take the piano like an expansion of his body to talk through the music you got it yes that's beautiful man i love that answer that's great roberto hey thank you for taking a minute out for neon jazz thank you for your music and good luck with everything thank you man thank you for the interview thank you appreciate it Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in Cuba, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Roberto for his time, honesty, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe DeMino on the iTunes Store. Visit NeonJazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the NeonJazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends.
Leon Jez.